looks like a lucky scent dabber you know i hate these little flick things I hate these can i just tell you and then if i use like the little tip yeah maybe i can dip it in there oh novel idea what a novel idea okay i feel like it's overly saturated though hello everyone welcome back to my channel my name is greta if you're new here if you're one of my subscribers, thank you. Welcome back. I'm so delighted to have you here. Whew, I don't know about you, but I loved the holiday weekend. Like I really needed that. I feel so much more recharged now. I needed a little bit of break, relaxation, fun, sun, water, all of that. Like I was really needing that. I was starting to get a little worn down, <sighs> but here we are. So let's get into this. I have for you 10 Stephen Humbert Lucas fragrances. I know he's getting a lot of attention with his recent collections. And I have 10, kind of a variety of the old collection, the Serpent collection, and the Soul Jedi collection. So if that's something that you're interested in, stay tuned for that. Okay. Um, so I went to edit and realized that I was using, <laughs> since I had an issue last time, I went to charge my microphone and there was one battery that I did not charge. That is the one I was using. I, I thought it was working fine, turned it on the light and the light just dies. So I had some microphone issues that I heard while I was editing. Whew, I don't know if I have it in me to do this whole thing over again, but there might be some points, just forgive me, where I was seeing like error on audio kind of alerts while I was in the editing program. But in any case, here we go again. Okay, so let me start with Isra and Mirage. I've had this one for a while. This is from Lucky Sense, and I absolutely hate these dabbers. I get like vanilla and powdery iris, maybe even violet. It feels like it's drying down and getting a little bit of woodiness to it. I actually might like this one. Trying it again, maybe I need to try it on skin again, but I kind of like this one. This one gets compared to Musk Ravager, which I don't know if I get that. I love Musk Ravager and it's on my like next bottle I'm buying list. It's actually in the cart and it's being purchased this week. This is like powdery with some vanilla and woodsiness to it. Like I feel like there's an amber wanting to sneak through there. Then I have Panthea Iris, which I was really excited to get this amazing decant from my friend Robbie and wore it for the day and was a little disappointed. I was expecting this gorgeous iris and vanilla kind of like powder bomb, but it was kind of weird. Like there's this fresh note in there with it that kind of disrupted that vibe I was looking for. I don't know what it is, but there's like this earthy green kind of thing in there, like this it's something outdoorsy that I don't like in here. It gives it a freshness to it, but in a dirty sort of way. I don't know how to explain that. There's like a green and a dirty note mixed in with my beautiful powdery vanilla that is just, it's to me disruptive and I didn't really like it. It kind of like it was trying to be too artistic kind of feel is how I got from it. It wasn't something I wanted to wear personally. And I don't get it. I mean, I guess maybe it's the tobacco doing that. Like, I don't get it, but I personally don't like that take on it. Yeah, I'm not liking that one. Okay. Then I have Taklamakan. Oh, see, now I like this better. This one opened like um, violet vanilla kind of. And it's getting more of like an ambery, like a woody vanilla, ambery kind of with a little bit of iris in there. I actually like this. This is pretty. I get, see now I get now also this iris violet kind of thing that I really like. I get that sweet vanilla, but I get a little bit of woods coming in there too. So this is more like a vanilla woods powdery iris kind of fragrance. 
the woods aren't that strong. Really, the vanilla iris, I think, takes a stronger, at least, at least on paper, might be a little different on, on skin. There's only so many I can put on skin, but I could try. I'll let you know. I quite like this one. And then I have the, this is pretty new. This is the Sol de Jetta Mango Kiss. I understand it's a trilogy. There's the Sol de Jetta, which I don't have a sample of yet, but I just, I have so many videos that I'm holding for one perfume. And I really wanted to try the Sol de Jetta because I've heard kind of really conflicting things about it and that I really won't like it because it's from the older collection, which is a very different style than these new two drops of the Sol de Jetta. Uh, Sol de Jetta, there is Afterglow and Mango Kiss. And then there's the Serpent Collection and they're a lot more mass appealing. But the Mango Kiss, holy cow, good mango. You get mango right on the opening. I wore this, um, it's a beautiful, fresh mango. It's not a syrupy mango. It's got a vibrancy and almost like it's surrounded by like citrusy notes that give it this freshness, this like fresh, clean, transparent mango versus a heavy syrupy or like mango shake like Cruz del Sur. It's very fresh, not quite as light as like say the Wilhelm mango skin to me is way too light. It's beautiful, it's fresh, and it's a fruity fragrance that keeps that fruitiness for the longevity of the fragrance. This one is delicious. Really, really like this one. I wish I could see when this released because I think it just released. They're like sending PR now. And then the Afterglow. Afterglow, okay, so from what I understand, Afterglow has the same base that the original has, which is a leather iris, which I really, really like. This leather iris in here is done really delicately where it's not heavy on either. They really just blend and make this cloudy leather iris thing. It's so beautiful and it has this kind of freshness to it. It's the best leather iris I've smelled where it's not like, oh, okay, it looks like a leather, you know, it's like a leather jacket with some powder, like baby powder poured on it. Like it actually really blends to this nice concoction of this powdery, you almost get like this cloudy kind of vibe from it, like this smoky air kind of vibe, not really cloudy or thick. Smoky in a way of texture, not in the scent smoky. It's not a smoky, there's no smoke note in it. It just has this um, hazy kind of vibe around it. But this one's definitely more thick. Like the Amber Glow, sorry, the Mango Kiss is a more translucent juicy. This has that more density to it from that leather. So, so good. And if the original has that kind of base. I think I'd like it, but it really got torn apart in reviews. This one I really, really enjoy. Like I have that on my want to buy list, both of those. Then we have God of Fire, which is the turquoise or blue serpent. I'll put those pictures up, which I know this one is getting a lot of hype. I know, I know because it went on PR, so it's gotten a lot of attention, but I'm, I'm not really feeling this one. I, I'm not really understanding this one as much. Aside from, holy cow, this collection with the snakes. Boy, does he go like a little realistic. Even the samples, man, the samples have like these piercing little gem eyes. See if I can catch the light on this. And the scales on the box, you can see like iridescent scales. I'm so not a snake person. Like I do not like snake. Like my culture, religion, snake symbolizes evil. Like we don't like that stuff. I don't like stuff like that. I can't help but feel like I'm in the Garden of Eden with like Lucifer offering me this juice, even though I have a whole garden of juice over here. You, you, you know, like I can't help but get that feeling a little bit. Just, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like this one, I'm not getting, like it, people are talking about this being this fruity kind of concoction and that's not what I'm getting. There's fruity on the opening. I get that mango on the opening. 
and a lemon. It's like mango and lemon. A lot like this first blast is a lot like mango kiss. But then it dries down and I get more of like this floral. It's I get the jasmine is what I get. Like I get white floral. I I don't get it. I don't like it. It has more of like a damp washcloth like that's been left kind of smell like damp laundry. I don't like that. I don't get it. But that's me. Okay. Moving on. Sandance. Sandance is a ambery woody vanilla. It's such a gorgeous vanilla. It's a um a very smooth vanilla. Very creamy and smooth. And that tonka bean keeps the vanilla really creamy, but but you know, it's supposed to be sand dance, you know, snake again, dancing in the desert kind of a thing, I think. It doesn't give me a very arid kind of feel. I really like the vanilla in here. It, I get a lot of the vanilla in whiskey, amber kind of a thing. I can't help but think it might be a little better on a man than on a woman. I don't know. Just maybe because of the whiskey. Kind of like, you know, Katai had that strong whiskey, but that whiskey weighed like that whiskey waned away. This one seems to stick around. It is not a sharp whiskey, but it's there. It's a whiskey vanilla amber. In the woods, you know, benzoin is one of my favorite things. The benzoin gives a little bit of this like vibration to it. And the Styrex gives that nice um, sticky kind of sweetness to it. Like this is up my alley for sure. I really like this one. Venom Incarnate. This one. Got these names, like Venom Incarnate. Okay, Lucifer. Uh-huh. It's a strawberry fragrance, but it's not a simple strawberry fragrance. It doesn't make you think like berries. Like it first opens and I get cinnamon. I get cinnamon, a pop of cinnamon. Then the strawberry starts to come out like wild strawberries and then some other berries. And then you get these like something different than I've ever smelled before the way the combination is. It's this like woody tobacco spicy kind of thing with the strawberry, almost like a strawberry flavored something is kind of how it comes off. And somebody said strawberry hookah. I was like, okay, I can kind of see that. I've never tried hookah. I know. No, I'm just not into that stuff. I don't smoke anything. I can imagine it to be like that because it has this uniqueness to it and then like this strawberry infused something. This one's interesting and you do have um, the caramel in there, but I'm, I'm not, I don't really consider the caramel this prominent note to me. It's like the strawberry and these woods and spices. Venom incarnate. Hey, uh, uh, I mean, it's good. I don't need a full bottle. I, I, I don't feel like this is one of the top ones, but it's good. Let's go on to the next one. Ah, uh, Lady White Snake. Okay. Now this name brings out the 80s rock chick in me, which is, come on, the band White Snake. This is a beautiful bright white floral. And these white florals that are very creamy with a little bit of a musk to this, but it's really creamy white florals. Like, to me, it's this melange of like tuberose and magnolia and gardenia and jasmine and just all these white florals making a beautiful, to me, feminine kind of fragrance. I just, you know, I have a lot of tuberose fragrances and white florals and I, I kind of don't need any more. But I would love my home to be scented with this. I think this would make an amazing candle. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous scent. Especially if you have like a white decor in your house. I think just the white and the white florals just kind of gives a vibe that's kind of pretty, but it's very, very pretty. Okay, and there's this one, Crying of Evil. And that name, why the names? Why, why are these evil names? crying evil, a snake crying evil. Okay. All right. Okay. I love this one. I really love this one. 
Okay, now this one I really love. This one oh, is definitely like what I'm into lately. Put it on my skin too, because this one is just better on my skin. Oh, this one is a beautiful, warm, ambery, patchouli, leathery animal. See, now this one reminds me a little more of Musk Ravageur, where it's this beautiful, rich, decadent wash of like all these different like woody slash animalic kind of thing going on and this intoxicating kind of gripping fragrance that just makes you want more like the leather in here is it's like a suede that's so subtly blended in with these patchoulis this is so good this is that sweet kind of resinous woody sticky sweet with leather to get like even out that sticky resinous kind of thing it evens it out where it's it dries a little bit more and then they have a little bit of like a dash of iris adding a little bit of powder to it like this kind of leaves a little bit more on the musk ravager side to me this one really got me like this one I really like, but that's that's the type of fragrance I'm really into lately. I've gone through every phase there is, by the way. Every phase, the fruities that, you know, the fruity florals and the tuberoses and the vanilla seven ways to Sunday. And like, I've gone through so many phases, it's ridiculous. But yes, I am definitely into this woody thing. And that's why I've been dying for summer to end to get back into them. Because like this month has just been way too hot, but it's shh, knock on wood, starting to get a little cooler. I really like this one. Think like sweet, woody, leather, vanilla. Um, there's a little spark of red berries in there. It's really like a tiny, it's like a facet in there of like when you try to be like, what's the sweetness? What is the sweetness? Is it vanilla? What is that sweetness? Because you're getting it from those resins. I don't know, is there vanilla? You're getting it from those resins and then also amber is made with vanilla. It's like vanilla labdanum and something else. And you're like, wait, it's something a little bit more fruity tart. So yeah, there's a little bit of red berry in with that sweetness, but it's this beautiful like concoction that's complex and beautiful. Not as animalic as Musk Ravageur because of that little fruity facet that's in there that kind of just gives this edge to it this little bright edge to it, but I really like Crying of Evil. I really do. So the ones, so the ones I like the best are Crying of Evil, Mango Kiss, Afterglow, and by the way, those two smell really good together, and Isra Mirage, but I don't get Musk Ravager from that. I get a beautiful, creamy, vanilla, iris, violet, like powdery, sweet, gorgeous creamy not like baby powder but like creamy powder like it's gorgeous I really like that one um I would do yeah takalaka mak baka baka I don't know what is this it's a lot of that's a lot of letters taklamakan that one is kind of cool too iris vanilla woods not as strong where'd I put you um Yeah, the woods come out later in that one. I just sprayed it, but the woods come out later where it opens with the iris. And sometimes an iris, when it opens on me, has like this mentholy kind of edge to it for the first five minutes. Um, yeah, the woods come out and it gets more, it gets prettier at dry down. But I like those. I don't like them all, but I do like those. And I think the three that I was really looking to buy was... The Mango Kiss, Afterglow, and Crying of Evil. Crying of Evil. Like these names, these names are killing me, I gotta tell you. But I might have to have a sneak. Ah! Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so those are my winners Crying of Evil, Afterglow, Mango Kiss, and I do like Isra Mirage, but it is that powdery fragrance that I thought Panthea Iris would be. I kind of like that one. Those are my winners of the Steve Lucas 777 collection. What are your thoughts? Um, am I, I, I like crazy for being afraid of snakes, even like bottles? I just don't want those beady eyes staring at me. You know what I mean? Like, right? Like, 
if you had like I have rattlesnakes like galore in my neighborhood here like they like hang out on the pool decks here like if you go to the clubhouse there's rattlesnakes curled up like you get out of the pool and there's a rattlesnake meeting you not really cool like not a very refreshing day you go for walks down in the trails and it's all rattlesnakes whoa don't like them i call the guy that does rattlesnake removal and he's like oh yeah I know where you live. I found the biggest rattlesnakes ever in my life in your neighborhood. I'm like, thanks. Um, I don't know if I needed to hear that or not. I'm already kind of terrified. Like when I built this house, I had dreams that I was building on top of a rattlesnake nest, like legit dreams of that because it's so prevalent here. That was my biggest fear because you hear stories, right? And I was like, please don't build on a rattlesnake nest, please, <laughs> please. Um, yeah, so it's a problem around here and I'm not really, um, they're not my friend. They're not my friend. So I, I don't need, yeah, I don't view them highly at all. But anyway, that's my roundup. If you got any value from this or entertainment, give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Mwah.